Okay, so we're looking at variance and standard deviation. Let's first of all kind of define what these are. We'll look at the formulas for them. I, I will say there is a little bit of, um, there are a couple of formulas that are possible to use. So like it's the same mathematics in the end, but it's a little bit different um, way it's presented. I'm going to show you the one that the IB uses, just because so, that's what's going to be in your formula booklet. Um, but also, we're going to focus a lot on actually using some of this stuff as we move forward. But let's talk about what this is, okay? The variance is the mean of the squared differences from the mean, okay? It's the mean of the squared differences from the mean. Now, if you think about that, we actually can develop the formula, okay? The squared differences from the mean. Now, what we're talking about, if we're finding differences, what that implies that we are doing what? Subtracting, okay? And they're from the mean. So the mean is x bar. We're subtracting each score, so I'm going to call that x sub i. And what are we doing with those differences? Squaring. We're squaring them, okay? We're squaring them. Now, we're finding the mean of all of those, okay? Well, to find the mean, you add them all up and divide by however many there are, right? So if there are n of these, we're going to take the sum from i equals 1 to n of this squared difference. Then we're going to divide the whole thing by n. Okay? That's our formula. Okay? I'll show you the, just to prove it. Okay? The sum from i equals 1 to n of, I did x bar minus x sub i, x sub i minus x bar doesn't matter because you're squaring it, okay? And then it's all over n. Now notice the notation here. This is the variance of a sample, okay? The variance of a sample. And the notation we use is s squared. Okay, notice we used x bar, that was the mean of the sample, okay? Do be careful, if you use variance or if you're looking anything up online, be careful that you've got the right variance and standard deviation. We're dealing with, with samples, okay? Now, the standard deviation is the one of these two that's a little more useful, that will actually apply more, okay? And I'll, I'll get to this paragraph in a moment, but the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the numbers are, okay? We'll, we'll explain that more as we go forward, but the standard deviation, the symbol for this is S, for the standard deviation of a sample, okay? Now notice we used s for this and s squared for variance. So what's our formula going to look like? The same thing, not without the square. Square. No, not square rooted. Square rooted, okay? It's going to be the same formula Just square rooted. Okay? And notice the entire fraction is in there. Now, I thought this paragraph was, was inf interesting here when talking about variance and standard deviation. It says the standard deviation is a non resistant measure of spread. This is due to its dependence on the mean of the sample and because extreme data values will give large values 
for x sub i minus x bar squared. It's only a useful measure if the distribution is approximately symmetrical. Okay? So if your data is really skewed, then your standard deviation is not going to be nearly as useful. Okay? It says, however, the standard deviation is particularly useful when the data from which it came is normally distributed. Okay? After we do our review of the pre-cal honors topics and we introduce the IA, we're going to come back to statistics and deal with chapters 22 through 24 in your book. Okay? We're going to spend a significant amount of time on that. All of chapter 24 is the normal distribution. Okay? And before that, we're actually going to deal with the standard normal distribution. Um, and... Uh, we're going to be using these standard deviations a lot. And it's really interesting how much you're actually able to use it to predict certain things or to determine ranges and, and whatnot. Um, used a lot in research as well. Okay. So let's just, here's our, our formulas, our notation. Okay, we already, we already saw these. Um, Sometimes you'll see them put the subscript N to show how many data values you have in your sample. A lot of times you won't, though. The N is not necessarily essential. I do want to point out, though, here, um, samples and populations. We mentioned this a little bit with the uh, mean. I already mentioned that x bar is used as the sample mean and mu is known as the population mean, okay, the Greek lowercase mu, okay? Now, what we're doing when we're finding a sample mean is we're, we're trying to make some kind of an inference or we're trying to let this number tell us something about the general population. Okay, and one thing to understand is that it is an estimate. X bar is an estimate of mu. Okay, the variance. We use S squared for a sample variance. We're going to use sigma squared. That's a lowercase sigma. I'll draw it bigger so you can see. Okay, it looks like an O with a baseball cap on, okay? So there's your lowercase sigma. And the standard deviation then, since S is the sample, we would use a sigma, okay? Sigma squared is variance, and sigma is the standard deviation. This, the S, Sample standard deviation is meant to be a, an estimate of the population's standard deviation. Okay. So this is the one thing that we really did talk about last year when we talked about variance and standard deviation, sample versus population. But, you know, here we'll make a note of that, particularly because when you guys are writing your IAs. If you choose a statistics topic, make sure you're using the proper notation, okay? You will get docked if you're using mu and sigma and you're talking about samples, okay? So, just be careful with that. Well, let's work our way through actually calculating one of these, and I think that's all we're going to have time for. What do we have? 12, oh wait, we have 12.55. So we might have time to get through more than one. Okay. All right, so here we have some dogs. Okay. We have some dogs. And we measured the height of these dogs at their shoulders for some reason rather than at the top of their heads. Um, but we've measured the dogs in millimeters, and their heights at the shoulders are 600 millimeters, 470 millimeters for the Greyhound. The dachshund here is 170. 
what is that, Schnauzer or something? It was uh, 430. And whatever that is. Oh, that's a, that's a French bulldog. It's French 300. Bulldog. Oh, a French bulldog? Okay. Yeah, French. So that's 300 millimeters. All right. So when we're, when we're finding this, there's so many different calculations you're doing. It's helpful to organize them in a table like this. So we're going to list, first of all, the scores, 600, 470, one, uh, 170, 430 and 300. Okay. The nice thing is, there, you can shrink it. So now we need the deviation from the mean, okay, which is simply the score minus the mean. All right, so uh, someone figure out what's the mean here. 20, we need this first, x bar. Is that 354? Did I do something wrong in there? I think so, yeah, you missed one of them. 300. 300, yeah. What was it, 2070 was yeah, the total? Yeah, 2070. Ah. Okay, so then it would be 414 for the mean. Okay? All right. So now we need to subtract each one of these, so 600 minus 414. And by the way, when you're doing this, the sign really doesn't matter. So you can just make them all positive, because you're going to square them, right? So you can ignore the signs here. 600 minus 414 is 186. 470 minus 414 would be uh, 56, right? And then 414 minus 170 is 244. Uh, 430 minus 414 is 16. And 414 minus 300 is 114. Okay. So now we've got to square all those. Okay. So let's work through them all, okay? Notice this is kind of a tedious process. You're going to have to just take your time, work through each one, okay? And I'll actually show you a little shortcut way. Um, you guys remember using lists? Okay. We'll look at how to use the lists to make this a little bit simpler and avoid those little arithmetic errors in the middle. Okay, so uh, what's 186 squared? 34,596. Okay, and 56 squared? Should be 3,000 something. 3,136. Okay, uh, 244 squared? 59,536. 536? Uh, 536, yeah. Okay. And 16 squared is 240, 256. And what's 114 squared? 12,996. Okay. All right, so now those are what we just found were all of these. Okay. So now what we have to do is add them up and divide by 5. Okay, we just need to add those up, divide by 5, and we've got our variance. Okay, so that's 0, 27, 32, <coughs> 3, so that's 10, 25, um, so we've got a 2, which is 13. 15, is that 20? Yeah. 
20. Okay, and then That's 9. Easy. Okay, so we have 90,520 divided by 5. And that is going to give us, I almost wrote a sigma, our variance. Okay, so 18104. 18104. Okay. <coughs> you understand? And then okay. we just uh, take the square root in order to find yeah. the standard deviation. Yeah, now we just take the square root. So what do we get for that? IB uh, two decimal places here. Okay? Now that's millimeters. Okay? But what that's basically telling us is that's on average how far each of those dogs is away from our mean height. Okay? Really, that's what that's telling us. On average, if you picked a dog, they're going to be 134.55 millimeters away from our mean of 414. Okay? Now, it doesn't tell us which direction they are, but that's a distance. Okay? So, relatively simple. Uh, concept, all right? One of the things that we will look at is the standardized normal variable or the z-score um, that comes from the standard normal distribution. When we have a normal distribution that we'll look at in the near future, this tells us how many standard deviations a number is away from the mean. Okay, so just as an example, let's say we have the tallest dog at 600, and we have, uh, let me write this down, 600 would be the score, minus the mean was 414, And we just found that the standard deviation was 134.55. Okay, so if those dogs were had their heights normally distributed, which is hard to do with only five dogs, but either way, um, you could then figure out what the Z score would be. Okay, so 184 over 134.55, and can someone tell us what that would equal? One point something. One point four. One point three six. One point three seven. One point three seven. Okay. So the fact that it's positive tells us that it's higher than the mean. And we're 1.37 standard deviations away from the mean. And we'll look at what the inferences of that are um, when we get there. But I just wanted to kind of preview that. That's one of the things we'll use standard deviation for a lot. Okay? All right. Um, one last thing is just to be careful... For one, when you have data that's grouped, okay? Here we had, again, the marathon runners that we were dealing with yesterday, okay? Um, if we're using this, okay, for one thing, we have to take into account the frequency. For another thing, we've got to we've got to use the middle of the range, okay? 
So if I'm doing this, I know they're all two hours something, okay? But this goes from 26 to 28. So when I'm calculating my variance in standard deviation, I'm using 27. And from 28 to 30, I'm using 29, okay? And 31, 33, 35, 37, 39, and then halfway between 40 and 48 is going to be the 44, so I'll use that. And then halfway between 48 and 46, and 56, I should say, um, is the 51. Okay, so you're using the midpoint of the class. Also, notice here when we have frequencies, you have to be careful of when you multiply by the frequency. Okay? Here, you're going to subtract the mean from each score, each unique score, okay? Square it and then multiply by the frequency. Don't multiply the, by the frequency and then square it. That's a common mistake and then you get just enormous numbers. Okay? So, just as an example, if I were doing this, uh, I would do... Um, oh wait, do you guys remember what the mean was with the runners? Uh, Does anyone have that? The marathon runners. I don't think I have that. I have that. Okay. Well, let's say for the sake of argument that the mean was 34. Okay? So let's suppose that the mean was 34. I think the median was 34, but... Yeah, but... Um, but we'll just say for the sake of our example that the mean is 34. If I am calculating the standard deviation, then when I'm doing this part in here, I'm going to do 27 minus 34, square that, and then multiply that result by 8. Okay? So, 27 minus 34 is negative 7, 7 squared is 49. I multiply that by 8. Okay, so I get, um, I would get 342. Right? 300, no, 392. Okay, so that's one of them. Then I would do 29 minus 34, square it, And I multiply that by 3. Okay, so 5 squared is 25 times 3, 75. <coughs> I would go through and do that with each one. Okay, so just be careful that you multiply by the frequency at the appropriate time. Okay? All right. That's really all there is at this point. We want to get used to finding standard deviation. Also, getting used to um, using your technology to find this, okay? The bell's going to ring in a moment, but see if you can't use your calculator. It's under stats, one variable statistics. Enter your data in a list and hit one variable statistics. The one thing I will say is that it uses sigma. The TI calculator uses sigma. So it treats everything kind of as a population. Um, but then if you have frequencies, you can input the frequencies in a second list. And just when you go to one variable statistics, there's an option for frequencies. And you can input L2 as the frequencies, and it'll do it for you then, too. So, 
play around with it, learn how to use your technology. It's really, really helpful. Okay? Alrighty.